What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Nugs B. Thank you for tuning in to Together FTR. Together for the record. I am joined by my brother, Dustin, and we're ready to bring some noise for you people tonight. We got some really awesome things we're going to talk about. Obviously, we're going to go over the entertainment history. Uh, I just dropped a new track, actually. It's called DTM, Doing Too Much. So you can go to YouTube right now. <laughs> you say, because, you know, I've always hey, been doing look, too much. I'm a little extra. <laughs> you know, look, I'm a little extra out here. You know, I I do what I do. You know, done a thing or two, seen a thing or two. You feel me? So go check that out. You can go onto YouTube and type in DTM Nugs B. N-U-G-Z-B. So type that in and check that out. Let me know what you think. Once again, thank you for tuning in for Together FTR. Make sure to go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. So when you listen to that song, go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the Together FTR page. Also hit the bell and then uh, click all time or always, I believe it is. But that means that you're going to get all of the notifications when we post new content. So I appreciate everybody once again. We just reached uh, 51,000 on the post reach. It's not in the millions like we used to be, but I'm really excited about that. And I really appreciate everybody tuning in and showing love, sharing, commenting, liking, you know, just really out here showing us all the support that we met, you know, that we appreciate and we missed, you know. So, but anyways, we'll go ahead and get up on this entertainment history, baby boy. So, we're going to kick it back. To 1955. All right, 1955. What's going on in 1955? So, there was a lot of things going on in 1955, but one thing that happened in 1955 is Billy Idol was born. So let's go for a rebel yell. You feel me? 1955, Billy Idol was born. William Michael Albert Broad in Stanmore, Middlesex, England. <laughs> what a terrible name! I don't went by Billy Idol too. Terrible name. But hey, look, the man was rocking. He had the tight jeans, you feel me? He was out here with the bleach blonde fade back, slick back pimp name, slick back with the feathered up. I mean, he was out here, bro. He was he was really doing his thing. Better him than me. I'd be walk I'd be rocking the bell bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Billy Idol born in nineteen fifty five, for those who did not know on this day. On this day in 1974, Elton John's Greatest Hits album hits number one in America where it stays for the last five weeks of 1974 and the first five weeks of 1975. Elton John, dude, he came up on the last uh, entertainment history. It was uh, it was about your song, actually, the, the, the song, Your Song. Uh, it was on that day that it became number one, actually, so I thought that was really cool. All right. On this day in 1979, Pink Floyd's album The Wall is released, seeing out the 70s in spectacular fashion as it sells over 13 million copies. The powerful concept album's themes of isolation and despair resonate with legions of fans, and it even spawns a number one single, Another Brick in the Wall. Part two, baby. So for all my Floyd heads out there, that's big, man. Like, I, it, it, and not, I don't mean like big in the sense of, uh, you know, obviously people who know about Pink Floyd obviously know about it. But uh, I don't know if everybody knew about the 13 million copies being sold uh, on the wall. So I thought that was really cool. And anybody out there who's seen the wall movie, which true fans of Pink Floyd have all seen the movie, uh, that movie is truly insane have you ever watched it mm -hmm. Pink Floyd the Wall it's like okay so pretty much what they did was they took the songs and made music videos essentially that made a movie like each song goes into the next one and it's it, it's like it's own movie 
That's pretty It's actually dope. really, really cool, dude. Like, it's really, really sweet. Anybody who hasn't watched it, I'm sure you can find it on, like, a fire stick or, I don't know, maybe, like, I, I really don't think it streams anywhere. Maybe YouTube. I mean, you, you could go to YouTube, and I'm sure you can find a compilation. You of, can find anything on that's YouTube. That's what I'm saying. So, like, you can probably go to YouTube and find a compilation of all the songs, like the videos, and just watch it that way. But... He'll yeah, probably, if you can watch the movie like on a TV, that would be you know you can get on YouTube on TV. But like actually getting the movie, I don't know if there's any differences or any additives. Or if you go to YouTube, know, it'll sound different. It'll have to they'll, yeah, they have sure. to like put a little box in the corner yeah, and you like, gotta watch this whole movie on this yeah, tiny little I, screen. I, I don't really I don't really know how it'd work on YouTube, but yeah, if you can get trash. some way to stream it or like maybe rent it at the library, maybe maybe the library has it. I don't know, but somewhere. Find that movie, Pink Floyd, The Wall. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. In a blockbuster. Blockbuster. Maybe. In a blockbuster. I was just watching a movie about blockbuster the other day. There was a documentary that came out or something. Were you walking, watching a documentary? Or no, was it was like a just... movie. It was like an actual really? movie. It was weird. It was about this guy who's had his whole life at blockbuster. He was a manager or something. I don't remember the whole movie. I ended up falling asleep. The last blockbuster? No, that's like a... That's like a... Kevin Smith thing. I don't know blockbuster. I'm trying to think. It started off at a blockbuster. He was a manager, and they were closing down. They, they were the last blockbuster. That might be the documentary that Kevin Smith made. Maybe I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, because that's a. Re- this is like uh, the real story of uh, blockbusters' demise and how one location, one last location in Bend, Oregon, keeps the spirits of a bygone era alive. <laughs> like, so I guess there is one blockbuster left. That's so weird, man. So weird to think about that we truly went in like rented movies and video games. 100%. I, I'd still, they still do that, uh, what's it called? Redbox? Yeah, Redbox. Yeah, Redbox. The, I, that's the only one I could really think of that would be that. And I've definitely rented Redbox movies like just to, it, because it was more so of like some family type deal, you know, where it's like, all right, let's rent a movie, let's get some food, like, nice. let's do something, you know what I mean? But it's more of like, a, <coughs> instead of know. going out to the movies, we take the yeah, movies home. you know, something yeah. like that, you know, which it, it's more of a, uh, not really a tradition, but more so of just a different type of event, you know, family-wise. It was kind of a tradition of my family, for sure. We Absolutely. always, always rented something. Always. And uh, my grandfather one year got a, a big old five point surround sound system. Oh, for real? That's and, what's up. And we would like watch it like we were at a theater. 100%, dude. I was about to say, I uh, I need to get another surround system, man. For real. I really need to do that because it's awesome watching movies with it or listening to music. Like, it's really dope. And the thing is, like, you know, it was definitely a. Um, it was definitely a tradition when I was growing up, and I like to do it with my kids too. But now, where streaming movies is just so convenient, like we do that instead. We don't really rent movies. Like every once and again, we might hit Redbox, but I hit it. I hit the old uh, uh, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime has some fire movies, oh, yeah. bro. For fire sure. movies. And uh, so the last thing on entertainment history. On this day in 1982, Michael Jackson releases Thriller, which becomes by far the best-selling album worldwide. And it's crazy (laughs) that this came up um, because I'm pretty sure on another episode, like two years ago, it was on this same day. I think I did did an episode the same day that we're doing an episode right now. I'm almost positive, bro. That's crazy. It's weird. I I think I remember this. You feel me? Like, I feel like that's a real thing, bro. Like, I think that really did happen. No, no I was running sound on that episode. I think so, bro. I'm almost positive, like, for real. I think that's really went down. All right, also, um, another thing, once again, if you're still tuned in, make sure to go to YouTube and type in DTM Nugs B. Doing too much out here, you feel me? And there's a video on Facebook, but I couldn't post it on YouTube because I took a bunch of, like, clips uh, from, like, you know, like, copyright thing. Like, it wouldn't let me post it, so... But it's really dope. I mashed it up. I got Baby Boy in there. You know what I mean? Like, I got Jody in there. Melvin. You know what I mean? Uh, I took some stuff from the Chappelle Show. I took some stuff from the Boondocks. And I took some stuff from Afro Samurai. So I thought that was really, uh, really dope. And it goes with the song really well, too. So uh, what I was saying, though, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and bring back 
uh, recommendation. So I'm going to do that in the beginning of the podcast or like somewhere in between there. I'm going to keep recommending you all things um, such as like films, like you know, TV shows, movies. I'm probably going to start recommending books as well. And if there's any, if there's anybody who wants to send in any like recommendations for people or have questions they want answered on the show or anything like that that would be super awesome as well so if you all want to get with me send it to my uh send it to my inbox you can comment it on facebook comment it on youtube um if you got my number hit my number you know whatever way you want to contact me just let me know and go ahead and send us some cool stuff that you would like to recommend or any questions or you know maybe guests you want to see on here or whatever it may be so for recommendations on shows, I got The Boys, which is awesome. That's dude, dope. Bro. I love The, the boys. boys. The Boys is, is where it's chain, at. chain, dude. Like, it's off the chain for real. Oh, goodness. I think one of my favorite episodes is uh, this lady who's like into BDSM or something. I don't exactly know, but uh, her superpower we went out of control, there. and she ended up put, putting this, this guy's head and smashing it with her ass. It's kegels for real. <laughs> yeah, kegels for real, bro. Do some squats. Get him out here doing Pilates. You feel know I me? Mean? Um, just demolishes him. But yeah, so the boys is definitely a recommendation. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, there's three seasons out now. It's got Carl Urban in it. Um, it's got uh, a couple other. It's got um, why can't, Dennis Quaid's son, Jack Quaid. Um, why am I blanking on this chick's name? One of the main chicks. I can't remember her name off top. But it's got some really good actors. It's got some, like, kind of no-name actors that are really awesome and end up becoming end up becoming really, uh, like, really good characters that I'm sure a lot of you all would enjoy. It kind of reminds me of, like, the Justice League where they go to the ultimate dimension. Yeah, yeah, it, definitely, yeah. It's Absolutely. Definitely, it's, it's got that vibe. It's like superheroes, if they were superheroes in real life, in the sense that... In our reality, if these people were superheroes, they're like all corrupt and like based off they, of they do everything for money and like sponsors and like it's just dirty. Like everything is very vulgar, vulgar and very realistic almost. Like if there were superheroes in our in our realm, that's what they would be like. I think at least I feel like they would be like crazy and like dirty like that, and like messed up. You know, like oh for sure. Like, but when the cameras are on, they're like. Clark Kent, you know, they're Absolutely. like, you know, he's like, like, they're all, you know, I gotta put my spectacles on, you know, like, for <laughs> yeah. real, bro, like, pulls out the monocle, and then I got, the second one is Cobra Kai, man, that show is off the chain for real, Cobra Kai is the sequel in its TV series, um, about the, like, about the Karate Kid realm, so it's like Daniel Sun, like, I recommended it last time as well, like, the last episode that you and I did, on the four piece, uh, I recommended it as well, and this one is just, it's a hitter, man. Like it really is. Like this this show is off the chain. Anything Karate Kids for real, bro. For real. Like they were you got all fighting, solid. Like, martial yeah, arts. You got funny stuff going on. You got real good drama. Like you really got some things going. That, Rivalry. Yeah, like there's just everything in it. Like it's a hero story for real, bro. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, another one that I don't even think you've watched, man. That I think you need to check out for real. Um, Titans. Titans. It's the live action version of Teen Titans, bro. I've seen it. Okay, all right. I've seen you it. already know then, bro. So who the people who haven't tuned in that the season's dropping, the new season is dropping right now. I think like an episode every week. Um, it's on HBO Max, but it's about the Teen Titans like in a real show. You know what I mean? Um, so that's got Robin, it's got the Red Hood eventually, it's got Scarecrow, it's got Deathstroke, it has, um, let's see here, who am I forgetting, uh, Beast Boy, it's got Raven, um, it's got uh, Superboy. So, Starfire. Yeah, Starfire. Um, what's Superboy's real name? Uh, what's, uh... He's a clone. Yeah, he's a clone that was made by Lex Luthor. I don't remember his name. What's his name? Kal-El. No, no, that's no. that's not it. That's 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 it's Superman's kinda similar real name. To it. I think that's Superman's real name. It is. That is. I think that's Superman's. It's real similar name. to that. Ken. Connor. Connor. It's Connor. Okay. It's Connor. Yep. So Connor is Superboy. So he, like Dustin said, he's a clone 
of uh, Lex Luthor. He's a little bit of Lex Luthor, and he's a little bit of Superman. Lex he's Luthor, in it. Superman had it um, on. What is it? <laughs> I said Lex Luthor and Superman got it on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but he was uh, he's also in Young Justice as well but he has a, a, he has crypto I'm pretty sure that he uh, the dog no 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 like he has oh, the, the dog. dog crypto I don't know if that's crypto and or if that's like another Kryptonian dog or something I can't remember it's been a second since in Young Justice it's not a dog it's a bike like a futuristic yeah, yeah, it's, bike yeah, thing like a, it's, it's like it, that, that wasn't even uh, like crypto that was um, something that like they discovered on a different planet or something, yeah. but it was like a robot. That was, it was really. It really acts. Cool. It acts like a dog. It like yeah, it comes pretty much to does. Him. That's very true. You're right. You're very right. It is more of a pet in that sense. It's like, uh, but it's it's more so like a what's that car? Like a car kind that was, of like I was gonna say that like, car. The it, car movie. Yeah, I uh, forget what it's called. Yeah, Night Rider. Yeah, Rider. There we go. It's like Night Rider on steroids, though, dude. Like it can, like it can do so much. It can fly. It can teleport you to different it, dimensions. It, exactly. Like it can, it can, it can uh, hit light speed. Like. You know, it can it can really it can do a lot. You know what I mean? Like that that is really cool. Young Justice is another TV series that for all the nerds out there like us that love comic books and love superheroes and things like that, Young Justice is fire. I'll tell you a good one. I just got done watching what uh, Sheldon, the baby, the little Sheldon, Young, uh, young Sheldon? Sheldon, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 Young Big Sheldon. Bang Theory. It was dope. Chris, Chris said that was fire too. Was he dope. said it was funny, bro. I watched the end of it. It's. They need to come out with more. Really? I don't know if they're going to or okay. not. They leave you on a big cliffhanger. Okay. Well, playing footsies with me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I haven't watched that. But Chris said he he said it was really cool. Well, literally, the so, end of it is like the whole last season had me on the edge. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't pay attention to anything but it. Yeah, I I felt that way about Cobra Kai too. Like as soon as it came out, I literally cranked out the the, the new season in like a day and a half, if that. And I was like, wow, why did I just do that to myself? I literally just ruined. I'm not going to be able to watch it for another year and a half. Like, genuinely. Like, And I don't know about Young Sheldon. I don't know if that's going to renew for another season. I don't or know. Not. I don't if it know. should. It, fr- it really should. Yeah. They leave you on the biggest cliffhanger. I don't know if it did well or not. Let me see here. Is there only one season? No, there's a there's five. Oh, okay. Season, new season. I don't know 100%. Uh, I haven't watched any of it. I didn't know there was four seasons. Season six, next or, or five seasons rather. Next episode teaser movie. Let me know. This was thirteen get days ago. Uh, season six. That's. I mean, it looks like it's uh, it's going down. Oh, good. I can't yeah. wait. It's yeah, yeah, literally. Peaks are already out. So. It's literally like crazy. It's, it'll be December eighth, so it'll be in a couple days, bro. It's like, not something I'd expect from like. It'll be you in about got, a week. You got your adolescent young Sheldon that is completely like. Uh, oblivious genius, to like, emotions yeah, and yeah. completely he's like a robot he doesn't understand uh, empathy or any of that stuff yeah, anything, and, and like he's coming in and like ruining relationships and stuff for no reason he don't even realize he's doing it he just <laughs> bam ruined <laughs> trying to get people in trouble and shit <laughs> throwing temper <laughs> tantrums it's hilarious yeah uh, so another recommendation I have, and it'll be the last one that I recommend for today, is uh, Yellowstone. Have you watched Yellowstone? I haven't. The only thing really? I've watched close to Yellowstone would be 2012. <laughs> no, 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 no. So the, oh, let me uh, elaborate. So uh, <laughs> it's not like about Yellowstone erupting or like catastrophic event or anything like that. It's about um, Kevin Costner and his family living uh, in Montana by Yellowstone and like that like it's a Yellowstone ranch you know what I mean um and it's just like some real cowboy it's pretty much like if Sons of Anarchy was a western so like Red Dead pretty much (laughs) pretty much bro it's like Red Dead for real like in it in it like to a degree like it's not so based on one person you know what I mean so like obviously it's a TV show so like it's based around the family but I'll tell you right now kind of like ranch yeah kind of like the ranch but like in a gangster version like a western cowboy like outlaw you know what I mean I bet it'd be dope if Will Smith oh. was in it <laughs> <laughs> wild, wild, wild wild west let's go for sure let's go that was boy. a great movie yeah tremendous I still watch it I hate it I grew up watching it. <laughs> he made the whole soundtrack, too. He said that was, like, the biggest mistake of his career. He literally passed on The Matrix to make Wild Wild West. Did you know that? 
I think that he was a good move, the though. What? Matrix is amazing. Oh, I'm glad he's not. I'm glad he wasn't. Uh, you know, in the Matrix because everybody who was casted in the Matrix literally was perfect. Literally, Matrix literally, was perfect. From and Morpheus spot on. to Neo to the the agents to uh, the uh, Trinities to uh, the Oracle to every single the twins. Like everything about that movie was casted perfectly, so I'm glad he wasn't in it. But I mean, for his career wise, I mean, it would have skyrocketed him. You know what I mean? The Matrix is. I don't know. Wild Wild you know, West is dope. <laughs> He's I hate tripping, it. bro. I hate it, bro. You're tripping. Oh, <laughs> I hate it, bro. It's literally the absolute worst. All right, so I got I got I got some real spill to put on you, my guy. So, what is? Let's see here. So what? Would you rather have in life, like right now, right now, what would you rather have? More time or more money? That's a hard one. It's tough. It's a tough one. It's tough. Because it's also... I'd say more money. I don't care about time. I got enough time to live my life at the moment. Fair enough. That is very... But it's it's uh it's it's kind of hard to really talk about it or it's a double edged sword. So, uh, it, it is. I only say money not for the greedy aspect sure, of sure, it, sure. but more but to elevate your life to give yourself more time. I want to open up a business. Absolutely, and that's the thing that I was getting ready to say is, I think, I think that as of right now in my life, I would like to have more time because then I would inevitably make more money from it. Absolutely. That's why I think it's a double-edged sword, because truly, I I know if I had more time, I know I could I know I could just I know I'd make well, more money. Well, well, how how is this? What's the stipulations on that? Is it like last stipulations where you get more time but you forget everything? Like when you go nah, back? Nah, okay. just straight up, like straight up. What um. What would you like? You, like, just straight up, would you rather have more time or more money? There's no catches. It's not like a genie. You know what I mean? Like, you're not getting tricked into nothing. It's just, you know, straight up. I don't know. I'd say more time right now. I'd say more time. But then again, it's also a double edged sword from your point of view because with more money, you have more time. Yeah. You know? So, like, either way, you're kind of going to win in either situation. But I think I would pick more time. <clears throat> because then the thing is is like you are you're getting that mu- <laughs> snoring he's breath. grunting he's like yeah. Ooh, he's man. like y'all gonna be done believe that I'm he tired of talking being about us you know we talking about what's up guy hey, this guy's hey, a say, fool man Capone say hi to the camera yeah this guy's oh, a you're fool. drooling everywhere yeah <laughs> better take that somewhere else guy go lay down go lay down <laughs> lay down man um, he said, "I'm gonna come over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in the middle. Yeah. What's up, guy? But um, <laughs> take it easy, pal. But yeah, I said more time, honestly. So let me ask you this: Tell me about the most influential people in your life and how they impacted you. So the most influential person in my life is actually my elementary school uh, oh. principal, oh. Mr. B." Mr. B. Mr. Blankenship. That Pogue? That Pogue, that yeah. Pogue, that's what's up. He actually looked out for me real tough. I had uh, just moved here and was an outcast. People hated me. I got picked on a little bit because I was different. I acted different. I acted out because I didn't want to be here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I, and I'm miserable because it's cold and I'm from the South. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> but Mr. B looked out for me tough, showed me how to dress. Uh, That's what's up. He, because I'd come in in this big burly coat yeah. and some shorts or some something stupid, and none of my clothes matched ever. Yeah. And matching uh, is a big thing that people like they don't think about. My hair was a mess, so he he took me and got uh, got he'd take me to get my hair cut. He had me in this program where the school would buy me clothes for Christmas during Christmas season winter clothes. That's awesome. And that was you've never even told me this. Yeah, bro. You've I've, never we've never like. You've been my literal best friend. Like, you've been my brother. You've been family for, like, a decade. And, if, and you've never even told me this. I'm so glad that you brought this up. If That's it wasn't for Mr. Blankenship, my, I would have taken a totally different route. Really? I probably would have been crazy. more... Oh, goodness. 
I don't want to say no names, but sure, sure, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Sure, sure. I, I'd yeah. end up more like someone else, you know. Sure, yeah, it could have went in a very different path. Yeah. Could have went into a very different uh, I could have, lifestyle. I, I could have I mean? uh, ended up like uh, one of our friends dead in the a streets. A lot, lot of our friends, a lot of our friends are yeah. dead. That's crazy. You're Cold absolutely blood. right. Um, so that's <laughs> that's that's one. So you so you got you got two more. So three most influential people. In your life, and I'm I'm plotting on mine right now because you just hit with like a bomb. I was so my was grandfather just, is number two. I didn't even know, bro. and I didn't even really like my grandfather. We had problems, butted heads. My my grandparents were, uh, it was a rough life sometimes. But I will say, I'm still taking lessons he taught me and implementing 100%. them today. Yeah, 100%. That's real. And then number three would be It doesn't have to be somebody you necessarily know either. That's what that's what I was going to Well, I was gonna say uh I'm torn right it's now. Hard. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It's really hard because the people that you see on a daily basis are obviously gonna be you know, even people you don't see on a daily basis, people who are in your environment definitely are going to influence you. Like, in, well, influence you rather. A so, lot of influence uh, I had came from Eminem as well when I was younger. That's true. That's, that's all true. I listened to. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah growing up, single mom. So that's no yeah, father. That's, that's real. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> you really, it really resonated with you well. Yeah. You know what it, I mean, it, it, yeah. I'd probably say for my top three most influential people <laughs> that I've had in my life. Would be, oh, probably. I gotta say, my brother first and foremost, man. He influenced me from the get go, man. Like he truly did, and that's with everything, like with my music, uh, with movies, with comic books, with superheroes, Harry Potter, like nerdy stuff, sports. Like he got me. Him and my dad were the ones that always played sports and got me into sports. Um. Literally everything. Like he was the biggest influence in my life, and then I just took what he, I took the sauce that he gave me and just threw my own flavor to it. You know what I mean? So like I really had an advantage, of, uh, you know, truly getting a wide, a wide variety of style. You know the way I dressed, the way I talked, um, in general, just literally everything, pretty much everything, for real. And then the second person, most influential, uh, <coughs> it's crazy because I want to say my dad for sure because like you were referencing about your grandfather is there's lessons I'm learning right now that he was preaching to me about. You know, there's things in my life that I'm, that I'm going through right now that he warned me about and that's happened since he died. Like since he died, I truly have met and encountered and, and like faced all these obstacles that were, um, you know, things that he had already told me like to look out for and with women and with friends and with money and living and just like being a human being. <laughs> I can say the same thing about my mom. I, yeah. She's also, you know, he taught me, he taught me how to be a man without teaching me how to be a man. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, because he wasn't there for me to become a man. So it's very, it's very different, you know. Absolutely, and, my mom had to learn how to teach me how to be a man. <laughs> well, that's something that was on the the episode with me and Lambert that we were talking about. Can a single mom raise a boy to be a man? Can they teach a, a can a single mom teach a boy how to be a man with no influence of any male at all? You get what I mean? That's a good question. What do you think? I mean, you well, my grandfather was around, but exactly. he died. So, so, he but, died out. But you had a male figure, a, a male fi uh, figure in your life, though. Yeah. You know? Um, that's, I think uh, he died when I was like thirteen or fourteen. Okay, so you were already very influenced by him. Yes, though. that's the thing. Absolutely. Do you think, without any male influence or true role model, do you think that you know? I feel like my mom would would have been able to do it. Just because, like, where my grandfather was an alcoholic and stuff, I, those traits, those things have a big impact on my life. If I, w 
if I wouldn't have had to go through those things, I'd probably be more, um, what's the word? Oblivious. Uh, what, you, what, what context were you using? What do you mean? Like you're saying, if she wouldn't have. No, no. If my what, my grandfather wasn't around. Oh, if he wasn't if around. If he wasn't you around, have, you would have been ignorant to the fact. I, ignorant to some exactly, of the facts. Exactly. Yes. I lived. You wouldn't have been. You would have been uh, informed about it. So yeah, I lived a, a very well-rounded life. I got like I got good side. I got bad side. I got poor. I got rich. Yeah. I got in the middle. You know, yeah. I've been all the way around the spectrum. Absolutely. I'd say, yeah, definitely my dad. He was a big influence and definitely was, uh, you know, especially, like, on how I felt about things and <coughs> just looking at it from, you know, there were so many perspectives I didn't look at when I was younger that I do now and I truly appreciate and understand where he was coming from. I truly get why he was always, like, complaining at me for this and that and the third and da-da-da. And, like, you know, he was just... I get it, man. I was a punk kid eating up all of his food and, you know, drinking in his house and smoking cigarettes in the bathroom and, like, partying like Paul crazy. Malls. Like, yeah, I, was, I was smoking. <laughs> smoking I was, Paul I went from I went from Marlboro Reds to Newport Menthols uh-huh. to Parliament to Paul Mall Menthols and then back to Marlboro Reds and then back to Marlboro Lights. And the thing was is, like, truly – I was not a good, like, I wasn't a good kid, man. Like, I really wasn't. Like, I was, like, crazy running around doing the craziest stuff with the craziest people. Like, you was there. You, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you, we you both were a part we of both. it. Like, yeah, I was you were part a part of it. of it. Like, you were there. So, like, you Hook already know. And those stories are definitely going to come out on this podcast. We're going to have to One day, like, absolutely. I think me, you, and Roach need to sit down and, like, tell some <laughs> stories, you know. Oh, there's a lot uh, of stories. There's a lot of stories. We need to get Bug on here. Well, she need to come in town or we'll, like, Zoom call her or something. We need to have – she got all the stories with us, too. Um, so, yeah, shout out to them for real. But, it's, <laughs> you know, we've, we've had some crazy times. And, like, my dad, like, he, he didn't even know about most of them, you know. But, like, think about how many parties we threw at my house in my room with, like, 20 people. Oh, yeah. In my room, oh, yeah. bro. Just, like, drinking Barton's vodka with the orange that juice. That one time Casey came into your house to the roof. Oh, I got so <laughs> mad at him. You were like, yo, what the fuck? I was <laughs> What's going on? I was like, I, bro, I was fired up for oh, real. Bro, that was wild I lo- yeah I and was- i can't even tell you how many times I've, that thought has gone through my head where i could just jump from the <laughs> bank onto your roof and i've stopped myself so many times well, because so many people were doing it so many it times ripped the, it ripped up the uh the shingles so that's why my dad was like you can't have people climb on the roof no more because we would just i would have i was like sneak people onto the roof and stick it right into my room you know what I mean? Like, we were doing yeah, some real, like, like yeah, we no. were some real teenage dirtbags for real out here. Like, it was no joke, man. Like, I, I feel sorry for your neighbor's house. I can't tell you how many times I would jump the fence behind oh, your house. No, so look, the fence you jumped was actually my papa's house. Oh, was it? That next door was my pa- My aunt and uncle lived there. So you were good. <laughs> you were good, baby. Bro, there's been so many times I so jumped that fence. Times, bro. Completely so many drunk. Times. Oh, hammered. Completely drunk. Bro, we were hammered. We were- we was drinking, um, like, we were literally... E&J, like, bro, X and O. e and Beams A-Star, Barton's Vodka, and New Amsterdam. We drank that oh, heavy. Gosh. And Steels, we drank We drank the malt liquor like crazy. We didn't really do OE, but we'd always get Steels, bro. Always get Steels. Steel reserves. Always get them. So we were getting turned up, Timmy, when we was kids, like, turning it up like crazy, going wild. Uh-huh. Bringing girls in, bringing all the homies in, like doing whatever we want. <laughs> there was up. <laughs> there was one time where I jumped a fence. It was in the middle of winter, and my uh, my shoelaces got caught on the top of the fence. <laughs> so I face planted in, oh, but, like my whole go. body just said Let's right go. onto the ground. I'm laying in That's snow. I just I just lay there. I said Ugh. I don't want to move. <laughs> uh, I said yes. Let's that was go. that's the same night. I was cop was uh, that the cop was you? looking for That's like crazy. I was I was walking home That's I jumped crazy. another fence and lost my phone yeah and the cop stopped me he was like what are you doing yeah. I was like I'm looking for, for my phone <laughs> massive <laughs> you were turned up bro turned up and it's funny because literally when I first met you you didn't talk for the first like six months to a year that we kicked it I was like who is this dude over here with the thin mustache bringing out the Puerto Rican for real dog like. 
My man's out here. He ain't talking to nobody for real. I didn't know what to do. I, was like, I don't know what we my guy's doing. We put him in stick together. Yeah, like it was like weird, bro. I was like, nah, but this dude's cool though. I rock with him for real. Like he's cool. And we just kept kicking it and like talking, and then eventually it just turned into some real like brotherhood family. You know, like it was just I. It, I don't even. It's so weird to think about because I don't even remember when that happened. Bro, like, like, how did that even it, happen? It, it's so how weird to think that we weren't in our each other's lives. Before we met each other. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's weird because I don't even remember, like, the time before. Like, I remember we met, like, actually met. I know we knew about each other somehow for years, but the thing, we met in Math Lab. We met Math Lab, yeah. Yeah, because we were degenerates. We didn't do our fucking work. I I was a junior, (laughs) and I was in, uh, because I failed geometry because I slept every single day. Oh, same. Every single day, bro. So I was in there with you and all the other sophomores, and there was like a freshman in there too or something. There was I wasn't in there for geometry, though. I was in there no, for because something you, else. Because, because you were taking geometry that year. Yeah. Tenth grade's when you take geometry. I was in 11th. I'd already failed it. And they put me, like, I was a senior in geometry still because I just slept every single day. <laughs> it had nothing to do with my intelligence. At 17 years old, I had a 126 IQ. Like, on the test that they give you at school, like, that's the one I took, and I had a 126. Like, that's pretty good. I guarantee if I took it now, it'd be way higher. But I used to, I, if I studied for a test, I wouldn't pass it. But if I slept through class yeah. and then took the test, I'd yeah. ace it. See, well, the thing is, though, the difference with the IQ test is that's your ability to learn, like, your like your adaption to learning. You know what I mean? Like, it's it, it's, it's a little different than most tests. I, you can't, I don't really think you could study for an IQ test. Maybe I'm... Just talking bro science right now, like uh, that. Well, be usually a thing. IQ tests aren't like something you should study That's for what I'm because saying. it's to test your knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Like it's to test what you know and what you can learn and your ability to learn, you know, or like adapt to essentially. Um, but I, uh, I definitely like we met in math lab, and I don't. Re- it gets fuzzy after that. Like, do you remember like day to day? Like, the point to where we got super, like, close or, like... We slept a lot. Literally, we slept in math lab. We literally slept in math lab, bro. Literally. Literally. Unless we were playing cards or something. What was that teacher's name? Miss McKnight? No. Uh, No, Miss McKnight was um, for geometry. It was Miss Panko and Mrs. McKnight or vice versa. Uh, She actually died, man. Damn. Yeah, Yeah, she actually died. Uh, R.I.P. for real. She was really nice to me, even though I was a terrible student and like yeah. caused problems when I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> and Mr. Then Mr. Lambert was, used to get on my ass too. Yeah, that's, cool. that's our dog, man. He he, 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 he made me stand in front of the class and took my desk away because I wouldn't stop sleeping. <laughs> He's got stand. <laughs> He's, I'm not even playing. That's he hilarious. He took my whole desk away and said, "You're standing," and I stood. And fell asleep standing up, <laughs> leaning up against the chalkboard. No, I was sitting here like this, like. <laughs> but he, Let's go, he man. used to get mad at me. He'd be like, bro, go. for real, come on. Yeah, you know I don't want to yeah, do this to you. On. <laughs> come on, guy. Tighten up. Uh, like, Mr. Step used to get on to me, too, because I'd fall asleep. He would let me sleep, actually. Okay, so let me let me say this. I don't think he let me sleep. Um, but I think I was hidden well enough to where everything was cool. I think I think I, could, I I I hid just well enough and I get my stuff done. But he he talked about it like last the episode that we did. He talked about it. He was like, dude, you slept all the time. Like I don't even know how you you know he'd always give me crap about it. He gave, and then like he's about to come on the podcast too. I want to have him and, and Lambert and and me. You know what I mean? I need, oh, yeah. We need to do that three piece, dude. That'll be a killer three piece episode. It was impossible so. to sleep in his class. I was in the front row. Oh, <laughs> see, I was like fourth row, like in the cut, like over by the air conditioner. And it was in building two at the time. But I had him two years in a row. I had him junior year and senior well, year. Well, he learned his lesson with me because I went straight to the back. Yeah. First day of school, <laughs> went right to sleep. He's like, nah, guy, you ain't doing this. You ain't no. doing this at all. Uh, there was another class I used to sleep in too. I, I truly don't remember when we started getting like really tight and like I know that I, one of the biggest you, things you were always pushing me to try music because that, you knew that's I was what a I band. Was, that's and what I was, was about to say. That's one of the things that was really really big. But continue what you were saying. You're saying that I was pushing you to do music, but there was something else too. I was um, I was in band and you you knew I didn't I never rapped or anything. Mm-hmm. But I can make some mad beats. Yeah, for real. 
See, and that's what's <laughs> crazy because instantly what I thought of after Math Lab and like hanging out and just like day to day kicking it and stuff like that, what stands out the most is when I was homeless and I made you record your first song. Yeah. I made you like, yo, you're doing this, man. Like, get, in, get up in I, there and record and then, your song. Back then, it was like, I thought it was so trash. And then I listened yeah. to it. We listened, we to, listened it to it Tyler. Yeah, with Tyler. Boy, shout out oh, our me, boy, oh, my. Tyler Arthur. Oh, me, oh, my. That's the new merch. You already know we're about to get it. Look, let's go. And we listened to it. And then it was his first song. We listened to it. It was this year? Yeah. It was probably June. Like eight months ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. It was no. probably in the summer. Well, about Tyler. six months ago. Maybe July. Like the beginning of the summer. Yeah. May, yeah, you, you you could be absolutely right. Maybe like late May, early June. You could be absolutely right. You could be absolutely right. Uh, but we listened to it with our boy and his little brother. Shout out Lando Calrissian, too. That's my guy. Um, so we were listening to the song. And we were bumping it, and, and like he was so just bent out of shape. He's like, "Man, this is so bad." And, he, and then we listened to it, and he was like, "Man, that actually wasn't too bad for his first song." That song is fire. It's still available too. Like if you want it, and you watching the episode, I'll send it to you for real. It's fire. First song he ever did, and it was good. Made him do it. I was like, "Look, bro, you're getting in. You're getting in the studio right now. You got to record this. I don't care. Like straight up." Bro, so it was in the closet. Oh yeah, at Bruce. At Bruce. Bro. At Bruce. He's out here slumming for real. Like I was homeless. I was legit homeless. My dad had just died. Like, when my dad died, I got kicked out three days later. Boom, I was homeless for like nine months. And then through that nine months, we were still recording music. We were still getting after it. I was still getting my daughter four days a week. Like, we was really out here still getting after it. After it, rather. Um, we really was. We was really getting after it. And we made some bangers in that time. Under Construction by Reefer Gang. Like, that... That mixtape is fire, dude. Like, you can still listen to it and all the hits. Salts is on that one, too. Salts is on it. Uh, Tony Adkins was on it. Markham. Rob. Uh, Pyro. Pyro. Uh, who else was on it? You and me, of course. Uh, you and I, rather. Uh, who else was on it? Uh, who else was rocking the with red us? Redheaded guy. That was Tony. That was Tony? Yeah, Nova. Yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's my dog. Shout out Tony for real, man. If you tuned in, I appreciate you, bro. Daniel. He wasn't rap. Daniel who? I don't know his last name. Daniel, Daniel something. Maybe. Oh, Daniel Davis. Yeah, bro. I forgot about Daniel Davis. <laughs> bro, Dan yeah. No, he wasn't in it at that time. I don't think he was in it at that time. He was either right before that or right after that. Um, I don't think he was on it. I don't know. No. no I don't think Because Kool-Aid was on it. He was it. like in the, like in, hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. But that was a great time, man. I really did have a good time coming up with this music. And also, that brings me back to another thing. Just so y'all know, me and my guy, we lined some things out, getting life in order, and then we laying down a new mixtape by us, and then we got a bunch of singles we're going to drop. Hopefully, we can uh, crank out a couple of mixtapes, little five trackers for y'all, uh, and then start performing again, go do a couple shows, and just really get back to it. Like I said, I dropped a new track, DTM by Nugs B. On YouTube, I make you laugh every time. You like that? You like that? Salt's the one that named it, man. Of he course, he would name it. Know. So my brother already named it. He was like, "Yeah, call it Granddad doing too much." I was like, "That is fire." Because yeah, I was gonna call it. Old. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna call it BMF. You know, like bad motherfucker, because that's that's you know, that's what the, uh, most of the song's about. You know, what I sampled and everything like that. But we got a lot of good things lined up. I'm really excited. I'm, I'm excited to be doing episodes again. Uh, we got a lot of good things coming up for real. We uh, hopefully we can get a compilation album of <laughs> all the tri-state artists that would like to be involved. So if anybody wants to be involved in the compilation album, we'll probably do a mixtape and just give it out for free. Just because I mean, excuse me, I don't even. There ain't no point in even trying to do it. We'll just do it for the culture, like for real. We'll just do it for our culture around here. You know, and just give it out for free. Y'all can go stream it and do everything like that. If y'all want CDs, we'll burn them. If you don't, cool. And ain't no said, big well, how do you burn a CD? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, I forgot, too. The third person, my most influential, uh, I said my brother and my dad, we got way off, bro. We got <laughs> way off, for real. Um, 
So the third person I would say will probably have to be my cousin Chris, man, who's pretty much like my brother. Y'all have seen him on here a hundred million times. Him and Lambert are the most uh, frequent guests. They've been guests more than anybody else on the pod. And yeah, he influenced me so much. I mean, he does all my tattoos. I mean, he's uh, with art and like drawing and stuff. Like he's the only reason I ever wanted to draw. Uh, you know, he really influenced me a, a lot with that, with music with uh, how I look at things as a father and as a man. He's really got me together with that. And we really just... Uh, some guidance. Some real guidance, you know. He, he's, he's, he's part of the council, baby. Like, <laughs> you know, like, any great leader, any boss-ass dude that is really on his, on his two, like, standing on his own two, taking care of business, you gotta have counsel. You, you gotta seek counsel when you're making big decisions. Like, you truly... Any big decision you ever make in your life, especially if you are a leader or a boss and have that <coughs> type of mentality, you have to have a small council that you trust and that you can be a straight shooter with and give all the details and give all the facts and give every bit of clarity that they need to make the next decision. But when it comes to being a leader and having that mindset, at the end of the day, you make your own decision. But you value and you take all the things from your small council to build to build your final decision and to build your character almost as well. Because think about it like this. Every movie, every TV show, every video game, every business – not every single business, but nine times out of ten, every business and every brand has consultants. It's all consultants. Are. The board. The board. The board. That's it. You have to have small counsel when you are making moves in life. And that could be with your, your relationship with people or your relationship with a man or woman or whoever it may be. It could be with your business ventures. It could be with your fatherhood, brotherhood, family, whatever you want to throw into the mix, <coughs> excuse me, is needed. You need a small council. You need that. <coughs> so everybody who doesn't have a small council, you need to get some people you trust. And if you, if you don't have that, I, I'm sorry for you, and I think it is a wise decision for everyone to seek counsel when you're making big decisions in life. I talk to my therapist sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I speak to all the personalities that live inside my yeah. head, so is that counsel? Yeah, I speak to my I speak to myself. Uh, it answers me too. You know, that's the only time I can have an intelligent conversation is when I'm talking to myself. I'm getting my Smeagol on. Straight Old Smeagol ass. Straight Michael. Smeagol. <laughs> Smeagol. I swear. So, what's going to happen in the next five years with us? What are we doing? We can't reveal all the plans because yeah, no. we got some plans we working some right plans. now that are some really big things that are getting – they're already in motion. We're already getting uh, – we are already progressing in our goals. And that's one thing I was talking to my girl about the other day about you and I. We – we didn't think we were going to make it past a certain point. And after that, we just were like, wow, we made it past this point. What do we do now? Yeah, what do we do? We, we haven't would died make yet. Goals. <laughs> we would make goals <clears throat> and just keep breaking them. Boom, boom, boom. And then it got to the point it's like, well, I guess we got to buy a boat now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we attained everything we wanted so young. Now it's like life is boring. It's like, well, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I would, I would push against that and disagree because we are still chasing a lot. But our goals expanded so fast. Absolutely. Like, when, when I say boring, I mean like it became. We're we're stuck in the middle of what could be and what can be. There you go. That's a great way to put it. We have to say what we mean and mean what we say because that is a much better way to put it. We are stuck right now, not stagnant. We're not at a standstill, but we are slowly grinding. But slow progress is better than no progress. And we are and have evolved every single six months, every three months, every year. We are always bossing up and leveling up. But it's just so funny to think that like, <laughs> our biggest goals we attained by the time we were nineteen or by the time we were twenty or twenty years old, we already got everything. We already did everything we wanted to do. 
Yeah. Like, and then now what we're trying to do is make money off this podcast, make money off the music, start selling our art, you know, get back into the comic book, try to find some new artists who want to help with that. We want to chase our own ambitions. We got other plans we're working on too, so just, you know, oh, yeah. just wait for those. For sure. They're coming up. I just don't even want to talk about them because I don't want nobody taking our ideas or just anything. You yeah. know, I, I, we got some real ideas that are they're popping off soon, like real soon. Oh, yeah. So... With that being said, it's just so funny that we just attained all the things so quick, and now our goals, it's like we had goals that would have taken people a long time to do, but we got them so fast, and then we had to spread our goals out to where it was going to take five years to get a goal. We did things in two years years that most people wouldn't have done in five. In their lifetime. Yeah. You know, like, we made moves for a good two, three-year stretch that put us on a different level of living. You know, it set us up. You know, we really, we really worked hard and really stayed after it and stayed disciplined and stayed motivated. And it truly, it, it helped us. It, it truly got us to where we needed to be and evolved us into like our, I'd say our second form. Like that was our second form bossing up. <laughs> second form? What are you, we were, Frieza? We, look, we were Charmillion. <laughs> you feel me? Like, you know, we were Ivysaur, you know? Charmillion. Who's your starter? Who's my starter? Original Gen 1. Ooh. Who's your fave? Cause my girl sent the decks, uh, the skateboard decks. Who would you, who who would you pick? Who's your starter? Uh, what region? No, no, uh, all of them. Generation one. Generation one. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a hard one. My starter is. And that, well, that in generation is... one, your starter first of all is automatically Pikachu. No, and yellow. That's... Yeah, on yellow, but that's the only one. That's started. Generation 1. <laughs> nah, dude. Nah, nah. Um, that's nah. nah. I'm talking... Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur? Bulbasaur. It's either Bulbasaur or Squirtle. Really? Yeah, bro. That's crazy you say that because that... Yeah, Squirtle transforms into a fucking sumo yeah, fucking tor- turtle. turtle. So... Tortoise. The thing is, it's funny you said those two and didn't pick Charmander or Charizard because the thing is... <clears throat> Raph, his favorite starter is Bulbasaur. That's his favorite Pokemon. That's, That's his awesome. favorite Pokemon. And Venusaur. You're right, bro. Those We're are the his, same. <laughs> yeah, I swear. I swear on everything I love. He, that's his favorite. And then Lex's favorite is Squirtle and Blastoise and Wartortle. Mine is Charmander, Charmeleon. I like Wartortle. Wartortle is dope. I like his dope. wings. But here's the thing. Charmander's always my pick in the <laughs> game, but Blastoise is my favorite. Like, real life. In practicality, Venusaur is probably the best pick. Now in silver, Quilvia. Is that Cyndaquil's yep, evolution? Yep, 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 yep. Was that on silver? Yep, silver. You get Cyndaquil. Positive. You get uh, the 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 alligator. Totodile. Toto, no. Totodile was, was with Cyndaquil. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get uh, bay leaf or bay, whatever. It was uh, no. Her, it's. Uh, <sighs> It's not bay leaf is one of them, but that's not the first one. It's uh, oh my god, is yeah. It was uh, Pokemon Gold Silver. Yeah, you're right. Silver was the one, the one I always try to catch Articuno. 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 Articuno was Sweetcoon. 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 He's uh, one of those. Okay. One of the legendaries. Chikorita, Chikorita was the original. Bay leaf okay. was the last evolution, and then Totodile. I think that's how you say it. Suicune is the dog Pokemon that looks like Silk. Like he's got a little swaying thing that comes off of his body. Oh, it's silver and gray? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, Suicune. And it, it, yeah, it evolves into like a huge wolf. You remember Houndoom? And Houndor? No, that's Ar- Articune. So like Suicune, look it up. Or Arcane is what you're thinking of. No. I'm 100% thinking of Houndor and Houndoom. It's like a, it looks like a Doberman. It looks like Capone. I know, I know with you that know one. The about? one I'm talking about is Suicune, though. Maybe it's something else. No, that's the one. That's the one? That's the one. That's a legendary Pokemon. Yeah, that's what I said, a legendary. Okay, I'm talking about the little, <laughs> uh, the little like, puppy wolf. Thing. Well, whenever you try to fight him, like, you just randomly walk across him in the, mm-hmm. in the, in the woods. So and was this? He just runs away from you every single time. Okay. So was this the same time 
the Ente came out? Yes. Okay, that was the same gym. Yes. Okay. So like gold was Ente. Okay. Silver was Sweet Coon. Got you. Holo was introduced. Yep. Yeah. That's and there was another one. Too. I don't remember. I don't. I don't. I'm not a hundred percent on that actually. Let's see. Yeah, that's the same. That's when you get. Uh... Celebi. Yeah. Celebi. Celebi. Is that an Celebi. 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 Yeah. Yeah, this is um, what? I think my favorite Pokemon of all time is definitely Mew. That's your favorite Pokemon of all time? Mine's Lapras. Lapras. I love Mew. Lapras. I love Mew, bro. He's really just does. adorable. Yeah, is it a boy? I don't know. Yeah, I said it's adorable. Oh, okay. I would say I don't know. Okay, Lucio was introduced to Ho Oh and Celebi. So the dogs were introduced as well. You're right. Raikou. Yeah, yeah, Ente, yeah. Entei and. Su it's electric fire and uh, water. water, I think. Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. So those were all introduced. And those were the... Um, oh, watch out. That'd be the those were the legendaries that were introduced <laughs> at the very end. Lugia, ho -Oh, and it's, uh, Celebi. It's crazy because each legendary that's introduced in most of every new generation mm -hmm. is fire, water, and... Uh, grass. Yeah. And this one was electric instead of grass. Yeah. Well, actually, but, no, no, no. It was electric because in the beginning they also did that with the birds. Pikachu too. With the birds. Well, they did that with ice, fire, and electric. Yeah. But the ice one, and water kind of go hand in hand. But the thing is, with introduction though, that wasn't the legendaries uh, in Gen One. What was it? Well, that was the legendaries in Gen One, but it was also Mew and Mew Two. Yeah. So you have. But those them. are mythics. You're right. You're right. Those are like psychic Pokemon. Yeah. Those are and those are also also mythics, like you said. They're like different from they they were ancient you know like Mew was ancient and then they created Mewtwo yeah so you're absolutely right yeah you're right they did ice fire and electric and then water fire and electric that's crazy wow yep. what they did for gen 3 now I need to know this <laughs> for real because the legendaries for the first two is is pretty much the same essentially let's see gen 3 legendaries dude it's crazy that they're on like Gen like eight yeah. or something. Yeah, fire. This one was fire. Fire, water, grass. Is that is is uh Rayquaza. Rayquaza, is he grass? I'm pretty sure he's I a thought grass. he was dragon flying type. Maybe. I could be absolutely wrong. No, he's definitely a dragon type. That's what I mean. Like I know he's definitely Yeah, but, mythical is Mew. Good call on that. And then it's okay, so these are all of them. Alright, got you. But here's the thing. Well, that's another mythical. Celebi was another mythical one. Yeah, Celebi was time so it was and grass. space. Yeah, you're right. So Gen 3 was Latios and Latios. Grodon. Kygro. I don't know if that... Kygra? Kygra. Kygra. Rayquaza. So, and then you have two mythicals. Um, so that would have been... Here, stop, guy. Stop. So let's see here. I don't know what Rayquaza. He's legendary. Yeah, I know that, but I don't know what type. Oh, what type? What type? Yeah, I have this guy. I, have two I'm, I don't remember. Pull it up, but guy, you got yeah, two of them. <laughs> Flying and dragon. That's what Flying I said. Flying and dragon? Yeah. Okay, Flying okay. Dragon. I, I said grass because he's green. He's green. That's, that's, that's what I was thinking. When you said that, I was like, is he grass? <laughs> like, I was, I did, can, I'd like literally think for a second, like, is that what this is? And then Gen 3, or that was Gen 3, rather. Wretched Rock, Wretched Ice, Wretched Steel. Reg, that's Reg Gen Gigas. Four? That's Reg, or that's uh, Gen, is that that's three? I Gen believe. Four? Yeah, it was. You're absolutely right. What did they look like? Reg, they look like the fucking the big rock, ancient rock. Okay, creatures, the golems. Got you. Okay, yeah, yeah, got yeah, you, yeah. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. So then, for Generation Four, there was five mythical Pokemon. Actually, I think four was Regigigas was introduced in four. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those weren't mythical, though. Those were legendary Pokemon. Yeah, legendary. Mythical? I don't really know. I don't know any of these. Darkrai was definitely a myth mythical. All four of all these right here are. I don't know any of these. I, know, I, I only know Darkrai. Gen 3 is... It gets fuzzy in Gen 3 for me, honestly. Like I'm, it, I'm, it really does. It gets I'm old. Get, yeah. We're we, old. We, we're we out. Fell out. We, and then these, I, I have no new. idea who any of those I, are. I, I, that was white and black. I have, I have that game, sadly. Generation 6? Not a clue. I play that one too. Generation seven, literally have I'm, no idea. I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm Gen ready. Gen eight, I played that a little bit. Don't know any of them. I'm ready for the new one. Have you not got it yet? No. You need to scoop it. I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Once again, those who have tuned in, thank you so much. Make sure to go subscribe. Speaking of Pokeball, what's up, guy? Um, so make sure to go subscribe on the YouTube at TogetherFTR. Go check out the new song, DTM, Nugs B. And just wait for plenty of more music and plenty of other episodes. I appreciate you all tuning in. This has been a great episode. Thank you all so much. Please share this. Comment. Drop some likes. Make sure to tag your friends. Go invite your friends. Any support we truly, truly appreciate. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for tuning in for Together FTR.